Hello and welcome to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. And for this video, I'd like to start talking about nervous tissue and its physiology. Um, the major cell that we find in nervous tissue, of course, is the neuron. And I'm going to represent what is basically a multipolar neuron. This one's a rather ugly one. Really rather ugly one. You can tell the school didn't hire me for my artistic abilities. Nucleus in the center there to make sure it's a cell. Um, and I want to clean up these axon terminals. In fact, I think just to keep things simple, I'm only going to give it one axon terminal. So this is a representation of a multipolar neuron. It has dendrites. It has a soma, or cell body. And it has a single axon leading away. The soma, or cell body, and the dendrites, in terms of how they function, this is where the cell undergoes what are called local potentials. This cell will have other neurons connecting to it by axons, so axon terminals contributing to it. I'm just going to draw two for right now. And these other axons are sending signals. The way they send those signals, remember how the muscle is signaled to contract? The axonal buton or axonal button has vesicles inside of it which contain neurotransmitter. The neurotransmitter is released into the synaptic cleft of this connection or this synapse and there will be receptors for that neurotransmitter here on this dendrite of this other neuron. Depending on what the neurotransmitter is and depending on what the receptor is for that neurotransmitter the dendrite and cell body of this neuron will undergo charge changes. The resting potential for this neuron is around 70 millivolts. Around minus 70 millivolts. So that means if, if nothing is contributing to what's happening in this neuron, then its charge will be minus 70 millivolts. And that charge, again, is on the inside. Negative charge on the inside, positive on the outside. That's the resting potential. Now, if this neuron is sending excitatory signals, signals that will encourage this neuron to send signals, then this charge will become less negative because of the activity at this synapse. So let's say maybe it increases the charge, and I'm going to start drawing a graph here. And minus 70 millivolts down here. That's our resting potential. And without anything contributing, the resting potential stays down there around 70 millivolts. The other one I want to draw on here right now is this one, minus 55 millivolts. And minus 55 millivolts so again, resting potential is down here at minus 70. This minus 55 millivolts area, this is called threshold. If the communication at this synapse is making the inside of the cell less negative, then if we had electrodes hooked up in here, measuring the, the inside compared to the outside, then perhaps the little needle that was on here would start moving in a more positive direction. And what you would see is that over time, the charge goes up. It might just go up a little bit and then come back down again. But if there's enough signals being sent by this axon, then this little 
charge change will go up until it reaches what we call threshold. Reaching threshold, what that means is that here in the beginning of the axon, which is a thicker region, This thicker region of the axon, um, you learned it in lab as the axon hillock. Um, it's also the trigger zone for the axon. If this region reaches minus 55 millivolts, then sodium channels open and the inside becomes very positive up to about plus 30 or 35 millivolts and an action potential is initiated along this axon. So local potentials over here, this is the membrane of the cell body or the soma and the dendrites varying either up or, and I didn't mention this yet, but this charge could actually become more negative and the effect of it becoming more negative would be to prevent action potentials from going down this axon. So these local potentials that happen at the dendrites and at the cell body, you could think of them as an argument, should we have action potentials happen and send signals down this neuron, or should we not? And neurons that are encouraging it are sending neurotransmitters across synaptic clefts, which lead to a more positive charge inside of the cell. And if I make this other axon come in, and perhaps it's releasing a di different neurotransmitter, or it has different receptors here, that may lead to the charge becoming more negative inside of the cell and discouraging action potentials in the axon. So local potentials happening at the soma or cell body and the dendrites are having an effect on this neuron and causing, it, causing this neuron to send action potentials or to not send action potentials. And that's what local potentials or graded potentials are all about. Let's move on to, oh, there's nissel substance inside of here, which I guess we should talk about a little bit. And maybe I'll represent them as blue. Under the microscope, nissel substance stains as a purple. And the reason we care about nissel substance is that when you stain nervous tissue, um, the neurons are the only ones that contain nissel substance. So the, nissel stu the, the neurons stain this nice purple color and the other cells don't really stain much. The nuclei in them stain, so you get to see the nuclei of the supporting cells around the neuron, but uh, the whole cell of those supporting cells don't really stain unless you use other stains. So the nissel substance is in here, and again, that's its importance, at least in histology. Its importance for the function of the neuron is that it's, it's basically rough endoplasmic reticulum that's specialized for neurons. So it makes proteins. It probably makes some of these um, neurotransmitters and other substances. So that's the nissel substance. Um, the nucleus, of course, is here in the center, and it has the same function that the nuclei have in other cells. Um, it contains all the information needed to make all the proteins needed to help the cell function. The dendrites we talked about, we talked about local potentials. Let's go to the axon and talk about what's happening at the axon.